Have you ever wondered what games you should keep or you should lose? Find out here at Purdue's. Yukaya Nomori is an abstract game. Now, there's two games in this box. You have the classic game and the more modern game. I wasn't really up to speed on either of them. This is a Kickstarter I got years ago. Rulebook wasn't very good, so I had a tough time kind of figuring out what to sticker, what not to... There wasn't a lot of discussion on the BGG page, so I don't know if this was something that really caught on or not. I would assume the answer to that would be no. The classic game, I don't know. It, we played it quite a few times. It felt like the first move was always scripted, and from there the game kind of started and moved along. And I, I really didn't have a feel for it. And I'm not a big abstract fan, so some other people might jump in and say, hey, here's the optional things, this is the better move. I just couldn't find it. And then you have the more modern game, which is a bigger board, a little bit more going on. But we got stuck into a couple of things. One, the rules aren't clear. And I went online, there wasn't any videos, there wasn't any how-tos, not a lot of information on it. So when I went to it, I was kind of like, how does this work exactly? And we kind of got into this like almost infinite loop where finally I was like, you know what, screw it. I'm going to go do something wildly different just so we're not stuck in this loop anymore of what we're doing. And that could have I wasn't sure if that was a rule problem, it was an us problem, uh, think outside the box problem. Guess what? Thinking outside the box worked, ended up winning, so maybe that's a plus for the game. Uh, you know, this reminds me of a game like Anitami almost. I, I know that game's a little bit different, but minimal pieces, minimal board. Uh, what you're doing is very abstract. The game plays in five, ten minutes. It's very, very quick. Very, very abstract. Um, the pieces move in different directions a lot chess, but they don't really have different powers per se. And I think if you like abstract games, this might be something you'd like. Play really quickly, play with your family quick. Non-gamers, children, everybody can play this. Gamer gamers can play this. And I think it's fine. I think it's a game maybe you can get better at as you learn more of the strategies and stuff. I, I don't know. But it, it seemed like something maybe abstract people would like. And I didn't such a classic game. I guess it's been around for a lot of years, at least my understanding of it. Yeah. The pieces are nice. Uh, the Kickstarter thing is great. Uh, it's not something I want to play again. It's not an abstract game I would go back to. Uh, absolute purge for me. So here's Yokai no Mari, which is a, you can see the two guys on the different sides here. It's going to be the kings of the game, if you will. Uh, these are the stickers. You're going to have some instructions, which we'll take a look at in a few minutes. And then you're going to have the board that will come out. Now, the board is kind of nice. Actually, it's very colorful. You can see here, and it tells you where all the pieces will go right here. And then you flip it over, and you have the bigger board, which is the modern side. And you saw the, the pieces that will go on. And you can see that fairly easily there. Although the river isn't as easy to see on this side. But the board is fairly good. You're going to have these really nice blocks that you're going to have. These are the big ones for the classic one. You get to sticker these yourself. And then you're going to have these smaller ones, which will be used for the modern ones. And some of these will have stickers on both sides, and some will not. Uh, so here you go. And these are the pieces. These are big, nice, chunky pieces. The modern ones are smaller, but uh, you know, equally chunky. But obviously, they're not as nice as the classic pieces, just because they're not as big. Otherwise, it's the same material, and they look great. So here's the rules. Uh, mine came only in... Uh, non-English. The English rules were available online. I didn't find the rules to be very good. It doesn't tell you how to sticker everything up. Uh, it doesn't really explain the rules that well. I had some questions when I was playing. You're going to get rules for the classic game, and you're going to get rules for the the modern game on the other side. Uh, the rules are okay. I had a lot of questions when playing. I had to go online. It doesn't tell you how to sticker it. Not very good rule book. So I'm going to explain the rules to the best of my ability from what I can make out from the rules. Uh, so this is the setup of this version. It's also printed right here, but you always have the same setup in the classic version. You can always take one of these people and you can move them in the direction of the orange. This person can only go forward, where this person can only go diagonal. And this one could go in any space that he wanted to, kind of like a queen, and this one can go orthogonal only. So if you move forward one space only, you can capture a piece by going into the location, and now this place is captured for you, and this is mine. The same can be said of this character. You can just take that spot, and now you've captured that. So these people can move one space up, okay? The other thing that you can do is you can put a piece that you've captured back on the board. You can put it anywhere that you want. Uh, so say I wanted to put him there for whatever reason, or maybe here, and then when this person goes, uh, you could recapture this position right here, and now I have him. Now, if you ever get past, if you're on this side, 
and you're going forward here. If I ever pass this way, you can flip them over, and he has upgraded movement here. So, but you have to cross the furthest line. That's the best I could get from the rules. Um, otherwise, what you're trying to do is capture this piece right here. If you're able to capture this piece from the opponent, then you will win the game. So here's a more modern side. What you're going to find out is a bigger spot with different pieces. So now we have like this guy who can move in different locations, as can this guy be a little bit new. Everybody else pretty much plays the same. The rules are all the same. You can move up. You just can have a bigger board. Uh, one thing you can't do is you can't put the Kodama back on the board in checkmate. That applies on both sides, but otherwise the game plays exactly the same as you would expect as you're moving up through the board. So uh, both sides play exactly the same. This has some different strategic elements with different pieces, and this one has uh, a larger board that you're going to have here as you're going through it. So that's how you play Yoki no Mora. Who should buy this game? Uh, fans of abstract games, maybe you want a quick game to play with like a spouse it's only two players maybe play with a kid um, or maybe just a friend but it's only a two player game so it gets the niche right down you have to like abstract games thinking outside the box I think fans of like chess or people who kind of dabble with chess these abstract games were kind of like this eh, not a whole lot here for me absolute purge